Atmospheres of Mystery, a prayer of St. G. Unlike the ark, the kingship comes in the maturing spirits of those who await you. It is not a cataclysm against evil, but the fullness of the view of us which you ordain. If I can make the life given to me in my spirit descend into my earthly life, I may save the world. This is completely true. Everything rests on me. To whom else? Also, you are able to ascribe the same scepter and destiny to any other man. The invisible church is coming to be what you have desired it to be, in the same way that you live within each of us intimately. You assign to us each the destiny of the world. This is not through accomplishments or through an era of time. For even now, invisibly, the stones of the temple unmortared are being fitted together. This is not to say there will not be an apocalypse, but that the righteous will be fully and safely within your life, your kinship, your kingship. For we have made the kingdom to be a place while it is the withinness of your supreme being opened unto us. It is not a land, but a moral state in accord with the nature and the will of God. We form for you a reproduction, a revelation of the moral glory of God as you dwell within us, your Shekinah. <clears throat> Unseen, there are layers of blessed atmosphere brooding over us as with the spirit at creation. None is higher than the other and so may be laid out in random order. God not only exists as supreme at all times and under all circumstances, but you carry through your supremacy against all opposing powers, and we with you. When death was conquered at your cross, there was no further need for the kingdom of Christ, a process of conquest by a man against whom had caused man to fall away from you. Hence, it is delivered up to God the Father. And how does all this come to pass? For our lives seem to be not much different from that which we lived before you gave us your faith and your salvation. We know that we will be caught up to you at the consummation of the world, but at what stage of moral rightness before you? Some will be taken in the innocence of childhood, some in the throes of their escape from you, and some tired enough of the world to turn away from it. But how much is enough? When you see us, you see your righteousness. This was fully given to us when the Son delivered us to the Father. It may be seen in this life how fully we are covered by it. For above us the stars shine, hope lying over these very heavens and song of the heavenly host of angels. In the precious air in which you breathe out, we breathe in, and among the singing of birds, the forming of oxygen by trees. Even the alien sea, as we go beneath it, shows forth the layers of life which are our canopy. The emptiness of space yet contains your presence. Its constellations tell the message of salvation. Somewhere, somehow, there is time, the capsule of our being, and in which we are given only enough life to secure our safety in you. For we are against you and must be taken out of it. Outside and above and beyond all this is the decree in which you ordained us to enter your life. And we are able because of the eternal dual nature of the sun. In a sense, we are eternal for we were always an idealized essence and lay within the nature and being of the sun, awaiting the incarnation. Upon the failure of our early life was laid this mystery enmity between Satan and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. Which seed shall bruise thy head, and th thou bruise his heel? Thus Christ to be, came to be from out of the woman by the Holy Spirit, suffered and died. But by this bruising conquered Satan and death, whose essence he is. And thus entered the possibility of our life and our salvation within your life. All our lives we have heard and wished for and prayed for the coming of your kingdom, some expecting it here and some there, and none knowing the great mystery of Messiah, his type and origin, his meek person, his obedience, which saved us all. 
for he is king of kings and lord of lords. It is this kingship which, within which we shall live. But there are to this two stages, the eschatological, which is our expectation, and the imminent, of which we are unaware. For in the same way that the Spirit entered the disciples at Pentecost, he enters us. How are we to experience this invisibility, his omnipotence and omniscience, his eternality, immortality, and the consuming love which he pours over us in his brooding over us? Be ye perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. By this we know that secretly, unexpectedly, mysteriously, we are being formed to perfection, only by which we may come before your countenance. We are made to avoid conformance to the world and to be transformed in our minds. How is this? You live and work in us even now. And if we come from you, how can an unclean come from a clean thing, thou perfect one? Jesus, familiar with the heavenly world by experience, tells us that this is an imminent supernatural kingdom, kingship in the midst of us, for you are in our midst. And over us your banner is love in all its many forms, that there is sunlight and warmth inviting us to the true light. For there is a further light which was at creation, which we cannot see which we will come to, in which we believe. Others lived in its seeking, though it is not we who seek you, but you who seek us to worship you. Abraham and all the fathers, Moses and all the prophets, their story reigns over us for our instruction. Their many words come down to us in a perfect completeness of direction in life, in love and in obedience unto perfection. It is not our body and soul which achieve this, but our spirit, which is a separate existent, existence, though it attends this life. Unseen, there are layers of blessed atmosphere brooding over us with the spirit as, as he was at creation. None is higher than the other, and so may be laid out randomly. God not only exists as supreme in all times and under all circumstances, but he carries through his supremacy against all opposing powers, and we with him, as we have said. When death was conquered at the cross and resurrection, there was no further need for the kingdom of God. Hence it is delivered up to God the Father. Why is it that in all ways we are two and you are one? There is nothing changed in you, no gain or loss of love, no of power or righteousness. Even that the earth was created a chaos and then reborn to order, even that there was a first Adam and a second Adam. With Noah, there were antediluvians and postdiluvians, a second world replacing the disastrous first. To our lives, it is said, you must be born again born from above, as from Ezekiel. I will take away the stony heart of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh, a new spirit. I shall be sanctified in you, before their eyes a spectacle. The Holy Spirit is the author and bearer of the entire Christian life, grace, virtue. There is an imminent world, and there is an eschatological world. Your will in our moral life shall be done declaring more righteousness. And what you desire is. And we will be given a pure desire of satisfying you, the supreme end of all moral existence.